Hello friends and welcome to Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton and we're going to be getting back into some good truths today out of the Word of God that's going to just elevate you up to a better place in life, lift you up with Jesus. I mean, the Bible says if you're born again, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have been raised together. You are seated in His kingdom with Him. Seated is a place of rest. Seated is a place of dominion and authority because you're with the King of Kings. Jesus is the King of you as a King, me as a King. He's King of Kings, praise God. He's made us kings and priests in the earth. And now we can rule and reign, just like Romans says, we can rule and reign in life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to be getting back right into the teaching today that we started, what, uh, seven weeks ago. Uh, this is actually the middle of our seventh week. Um, I've already taught 32 lessons on the subject we're talking about. And this is going to be lesson number 33. The Bible calls what we're teaching about in numerous places, the way of peace. And we are actually, we're, we're calling it the way to control your feelings. Because God's peace and God's joy um, were meant to control the way you feel. God wants you feeling happy, joyous, restful, tranquil, peaceful. That's why if you read the 23rd Psalm, he leads you beside still waters and green pastures, just all the stuff he says in this 23rd Psalm. He lets you know, hey, your life is supposed to be a life of happiness. You're supposed to be a happy person, uh, smiling, having fun. Fun and Christianity do go together, uh, even though most people don't realize that. In fact, the more you act like Christ, the more fun you will have in life. And it won't be a temporary fun that gives you a headache later on or a temporary fun that messes up your marriage or whatever later on. No, this is a fun that is an everlasting fun. I have, I've, when I got turned on to the real Jesus, not the religious one that a lot of churches teach about, but the real Jesus, when I got turned on to the real Jesus, I have never had so much fun in my life. Uh, I smile all the time. I'm happy all the time. I'm full of life. I'm talking about even when I'm going through the storms of life. Jesus showed me. He illustrated to me and to you, by the way. He illustrated to me how I'm supposed to act in a storm. You know what he did? He was in the ship with his disciples. A storm came up in life. He went back to the back part of the ship. In fact, he was already in the back part of the ship asleep when the storm came. And when the storm was raging, Jesus was resting. He was sleeping. <laughs> I love it, man. I'll tell you what, that's the kind of life Jesus wants us to live. So let's get back into this, this uh, series called The Way to Control Your Emotions, The Way to Control Your Feelings. You, you can decide every day when you get out of bed that I am going to feel good today. I'm going to feel full of peace. I am going to feel full of joy. And that's what's going to dominate me. And you learn to yield to the fruit that is on the inside of you, that fruit of peace and that fruit of joy. So let's go back to Isaiah 53. We've been reading this, our foundation text, every time, every, every time we have a program. So Isaiah 53, verse 4 said, Surely Jesus bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. And then verse 5, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So Jesus on the cross took care of all negative emotions. He defeated them. He bore them for us so that we don't have to. Just like he bore sin, just like he bore sickness, he bore grief and he bore sorrow and he bore depression and he bore bad temper and stress and worry and frustration and all those negative emotions. He bore them all. And that's why we can cast those things like 1 Peter 5, 7. We were looking at the last couple lessons, casting all your care, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on him because because he cares for you. The reason we can cast them is because they have no power over us anymore. Jesus defeated them. And if you've been with us in the previous programs, man, we've learned a lot of scriptures that show us they absolutely have been dethroned in our lives. They've been uh, uh, debunked of power, whatever word you want to fi find here. They, they have been stripped, just like Satan was stripped, and all of his principalities and power. So all of his stuff... Uh, that are part of the kingdom of darkness, worry and stress and depression, discouragement and fears and bad temper, all that stuff, it's been totally defeated and has no power over us anymore. 
And if, and if you're sitting there asking, then why am I depressed? Why? Then you need to go back and listen because the only way you can be depressed is if you yield to it starts with a thought. If you yield to depression, because depression's already been totally voided of power, uh, the Amplified of, of John 16, 33, he said um, in John 16, 33, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. I have uh, uh, taken all the power out of it and conquered it for you, totally conquered it for you, the Amplified says. Um, I'm telling you, it cannot make you feel that way unless you don't know any better and you just yield to it by default. And that's what a lot of Christians do. So we can cast our cares because Jesus had already de defeated and, and totally whipped and stripped uh, every negative emotion of power to harm us. Uh, casting all your cares. So we were looking at this word care. We found out it's the Greek word maremna and it refers to all the cares and worries and stresses of life, which is depression, discouragement, all those things. And we were looking at another place this word care is used. Remember what the Lord told me? The Lord told me, uh, casting all your care, He said, if you don't cast your care, in other words, you go ahead and worry about things and you go ahead and get stressed out about things, He says, worry and stress and all those things are dangerous and they're deceptive. And then he took me over to Luke where we ended last program. Let's go back over there and showed me where this same word care that we're supposed to be casting, he showed me where it was used and then gave me revelation why it's so dangerous and deceptive. Now remember we found out last program, if you weren't here, you got to go last two programs. You got to listen because care, worry is a form of pride. Uh, depression is a form of pride. Bad temper is a form of pride. Uh, discouragement, um, stress, uh, frustration, guilt, shame, all of those negative emotions, they're forms of pride. And God does not want us operating in pride because in the same passage of 1 Peter, verse 5 said, God resists the proud and grace He allows to flow to the humble. So humble yourselves, verse 6 says, by, verse 7, casting all your care. So casting our care is actually an act of humility. But if we don't cast it, if we worry, if we stress, then it's dangerous and it's deceptive. Let me show you again why. Luke 21, 34, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, lest that, uh, so that day come on you unawares. Notice it said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. We found out that word hearts is actually referring to your soulish realm, your mental realm, your emotions and your feelings. So take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your feelings or emotions are overcharged. That word overcharged means weighed down, overburdened. And he says, um, he said, take heed lest any time your emotions get overcharged with surfeiting. We found out that was a condition caused by alcohol, giddiness caused by alcohol, headaches caused by alcohol. And then drunkenness, that's a condition caused by alcohol. That's talking about totally intoxicated. So you're drunk, the old saying, drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Not sure where that came from, except I've heard some people explain it to me. It makes more sense, but still drunk as a skunk. I've never seen a drunk skunk. So anyway, <laughs> uh, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your, your emotions get get weighed down with alcohol, getting giddy, drunkenness, getting totally intoxicated, or cares of this life. So we pointed out last program, the end of last program, God actually puts depression and bad temper and discouragement and stress and worry and all of those part of the cares of this life. He puts them in the same category as somebody intoxicated and giddy or intoxicated and totally drunk. He said, you're in the same category with them. Wow. Wow. That's dangerous and that's deceptive. When somebody is worrying, they're no better off than a drunk. When somebody is flying off the handle and allowing bad temper to up, they're no better off than a drunk. They're in fact, according to this verse, they're acting like one. Wow. The cares of this life. He said, take heed, lest any time we're not supposed to allow these cares to stay. So he says, the cares of this life will act, cause you to act just like a drunk or just like a giddy person that's had alcohol. Man. Then, now that, that already shows you why it's deceptive. 
because people never thought that, well, just because I'm discouraged right now doesn't mean I'm like a drunk person. Yes, it does. That's what Jesus is saying here. Well, just because I'm depressed and want to die doesn't mean I'm like a drunk person. Yes, it does. That's what Jesus is saying. Wow. But no, notice what he goes on to say, and here's something that's going to uh, open the eyes for some of you. Some of you probably watching have been wondering why you haven't been hearing from God. I've heard people say, I don't understand why I don't hear from God. You know, Brother Larry says the Lord said this to him and the Lord said that. And my pastor said, the, I heard the Lord say this. And I hear other Christians say, you know, the Spirit of God showed me this and God showed me this and the Lord spoke this to me and the Lord revealed this to me. And I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been praying and I just haven't been hearing the Lord at all. I just don't understand why. Let me show you why. Take heed to yourselves, look at Luke 21, 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Watch this phrase. So that day come on you unawares. Mm, unawares. What day? It's talking about the return of Jesus, but it doesn't really matter what day, whether it's talking about the first coming, second coming, third coming, whatever. It, that day come on you unawares is referring to Jesus coming back. But for it to say that day that you are unaware of it, now take the context, you're going to be unaware of it just like the guy that's giddy on alcohol. He is unaware of what's going on in his life and what's going on around him unaware of what's going on with other people, unaware. And somebody that's drunkenness, it says here, drunkenness, totally intoxicated, drunk as a skunk, that person is unaware of what's going on in any realm. And God then says, if you're full of worry and full of kiss, it calls it the cares of this life. Remember, this is the same Greek word marimna as in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care. He said, if you have this care going on, that day, whatever day it is, is going to come on. In other words, you're going to be unaware of what God's doing, just like the drunk and the giddy person is unaware of what's going on around them. You're going to be unaware of what the Holy Spirit is saying. You're going to be unaware of what's going on in the kingdom of God. Wow, that shows you how dangerous worry and stress is. That shows you how deceptive bad temper and uh, de depression and discouragement and all those other things. It shows you all of those things, the cares of this life are dangerous and deceptive because you will be unaware. So in other words, God is still speaking to you, but because you're drunk with cares, you're not aware of what he's saying. You're not on the same wavelength. You're not listening to God. Man, that is powerful. And so he says in Luke 21, 34, take heed to yourselves. He's actually warning us that we don't have to be drunk on cares. We don't have to be drunk on depression. We don't have to be drunk on frustration. We don't have to be drunk on stress. We don't have to be drunk on bad temper. We don't have to be drunk on hurt feelings. We don't have to allow those cares to stay. And he says, take heed. You know what he's taught? When he says take heed, it'd be like, let me give you an example. Let's say you're coming over to my house and let's just say I don't have one, but let's just say I have this huge Rottweiler and he was trained and sent to Iraq during the Iraq war and he killed at least seven, eight people. I mean, this dog was trained as an attack dog, but he was a trained to obey my voice. And so I invite you over for dinner. And before you come over for dinner, I tell you, hey, listen, when you get to the house, um, text me or call me or let me know before you go through the gate. We have a Rottweiler. He is a trained attack killer dog. So just take heed before you come through the fence. Just give me a call so I'll put him away and then you can come on and, and, and have dinner. What do you think I meant by take heed? What did I mean? When I told you to take heed of my killer dog, what did I mean? You would say, well, you meant that you didn't want me to be dinner. You wanted me to have dinner. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. For me to say take heed means I don't want you to be my dog's dinner. I've invited you over for dinner. So take heed. I have a, a, a killer attack dog, a Rottweiler. If I didn't care about you, 
the way some people talk, man, God doesn't care about us till we get to heaven. Oh yeah, Jesus is telling us right here, He cares about you so much, He does not allow, want you allowing stress and worry and depression and fear and all those things. He doesn't want, so He says, take heed. If I didn't care, if I had that rot water and I did not care about you, I would say, come on over for dinner and not tell you about my Rottweiler. <laughs> yeah, I would just say, come on over and think, eh, I won't tell him and he'll end up being dinner. <laughs> yeah, but by, by me telling you, take heed, that means I care. And that's what we found out in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on him for he cares for you. See, God cares about us and our lives. So he says right here, take heed so that these cares, marimna, the same marimna that I'm telling you to cast in 1 Peter 5, 7, so they don't stay. Cast them. Take heed. Don't let them stay. Man, take heed. And then I love this, and then we'll go on to our next verse. I love this. He said, take heed to yourselves. Look at the verse. Lest at any time these cares weigh you down. Just like alcohol weigh you down in the verse, he says, these cares will weigh you down, overburden you, and then defeat you because you won't be aware of what's going on. God will be talking to you, but you won't be hearing. You're not on the same wavelength. God's trying to lead you and guide your path, direct your path, but you're not hearing directions. This is why you've been weighed down. You're down in the dumps. You're weighed down and God is wanting to exalt you. He's wanting to lift you up and elevate you up out of that if you will humble yourself and cast the cares. God can't cast the cares for you. You have to do it. But He's given you the ability and the grace to do it by His peace that He's put in you and by His joy that's in you. But He says this, Take heed to yourselves lest at any time. Now, what does any time mean? I can hear somebody saying, well, it means all the time. Exactly. Hello. God says any time, which means I can do this all the time. But let me, let, me, let me make it even simpler. Any time. Any time. T-I-M-E. It means that time, that time, that time, that time, that time, that time, that. What do you mean, Brother Larry? In other words, that time of month, that time of life, that time of year, that time of taxes, that time of a financial woe, that time of a physical attack, that time, that time, that whatever time it is, God said, take heed lest at any time these things overwhelm you. He says right here, we do not have to allow them at any time. I don't care what that time is in your life. You don't have to allow yourself to be depressed, discouraged, fly off the hand, or be, be, in a, be in, on an emotional roller coaster. You do, that's, a, that's a time you're facing, and you don't have to allow that time to overwhelm you. God said it right here. Then another place God uses this Greek word marimna. Remember, we're looking at the word care, casting all your care. It's the Greek word marimna. Another place it's used is in Mark 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to read verses 18 and 19. This is the parable of the sower that talks about four types of ground, wayside ground, stony ground, thorny ground, good ground. Uh, the good ground is being referred to, uh, the good ground uh, that is being referred to here is the soil of the heart. Well, actually all these grounds, whether it's the good ground, thorny ground, stony ground, or wayside ground, uh, it's all referring to the soil of the heart. That's why some people, instead of calling this the parable of the sower. They call it the parable of the four soils. That's pretty good too. So just in case you have not learned this yet, Satan is the one involved. He's the one behind all of the attacks in wayside ground, stony ground, and thorny ground. God's the one involved in the good ground. He's working in that person's life. But the devil is trying to stop the word from working, and so he tries to make you wayside ground, uh, stony ground, or thorny ground. And so verse 4, 14 rather, uh, of Mark 4, the sower sows the word, and of course then it starts talking about the different grounds. Well, the wayside ground, uh, the devil gets the word from you, the stony ground he gets the word from you, the, the thorny ground, that's where I want to pick up in the thorny ground, because if he can't get you to be wayside ground, and if he can't get you to be stony ground, then he's going to try and get you to be uh, thorny ground. Look at what it says in verse 8. 18, these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. 
Then it goes on, these are they that are sowed on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, 30, 40, 60, 30, 60, 100 fold. But look at verses 18 and 19. This is those, they hear the word. This is thorny ground. Now, these, they hear the word, but then three things are going to try. We only have time to deal with one of these things, but three different areas God says the devil's going to try and use to choke the word out of you. Number one is the cares of this world. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches. Or number three, the lust of other things. So deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, two areas the devil's going to try to make you thorny ground so he can choke the word out of your life. But we don't have time to deal with those. We do, let's zero in on the one we are talking about, which is your emotions, your feelings, the cares of this world. That's the cares that we just found out that would cause you to be unaware of what the Spirit of God is doing, unaware of God's voice, unaware of His leadings and things like that, and dangerous and deceptive. Remember God told me worry, stress, those things are the most dangerous forms of pride and deceptive forms of pride. Well, here's why right here. The devil's trying to get you to get your eyes off the Word and onto self because if it's about self, it's pride. And if it's pride, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves by casting your care. But notice here, the cares of this world, this is the same Greek word marimna. And he says right here, it is going to cause the word to be choked. It'll choke the word and the word will become unfruitful. Again, this is the same word marimna. Actually, if you study this word marimna out, it's the, it comes from a root word meridzo. Meridzo means to disunite or to divide. You could say it this way, cut into pieces, because when you're disunited, you're falling, you're, you just feel like your life's falling apart. That's what the word meridzo means. In fact, let me show you another place the word meridzo is used. Jesus in Mark, or in Matthew 12, 25, Jesus uh, in verse 25 knew their thoughts and said, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought into desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So a kingdom divided against itself can't stand. This word divided is the word meridzo. Divided, a kingdom divided, a, a, that's disunited, that's fallen apart, cut into pieces, as we say. That's the root word of marimna, the word care. And what happens when people allow cares to stay, it disunites them from the word and causes them to fall into pieces. And that's when you hear people say, I just can't take it anymore. I just, I feel like I'm falling apart. I just, I can't hold myself together. I just, ah, yeah. and they, and they want to die. They, Jesus, take me home. I want to die and go to heaven. The devil has caused you to be thorny ground. He's caused you to be disunited from the word. He's caused the word, he's, he's caused the word not to be fruitful in your life. Notice it says, it says, um, uh, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. That's exactly what the devil is trying to do. Get that fruit of peace and that fruit of joy to be unfruitful. In other words, that fruit not operating. You still have it. It's in you. The Holy Ghost never left you. So as long as the Holy Ghost is in you, he brought it in with him. He's not taking it out. So you have peace and you have joy even when it's unfruitful. But it's the devil that's behind it. And that's what I wanted you to see, the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when you see this, it gave me such a boldness when I realized, wait a minute, depression is a work of the devil. He's the one behind it. Bad temper, the devil's behind it. it it's part of his fruit. He's the one trying to get me stressed, stressed, worry. It's a part of the kingdom of darkness. The devil's the one behind it. And when you see that, then you can realize this. Well, wait a minute. The devil has nothing over me. Ephesians says he's under my feet. The Bible says God's destroyed or loosened me from the works of the devil. The Bible said I have all authority and power over all of his works and nothing of his works can hurt me. Luke 10, 19, right? So I don't have to allow the devil to make me depressed anymore. Now, once I saw the devil was behind depression and bad temper and worry and stress and all those things, I, I, you're, not, you're not making me anymore, devil. You're not making me feel that way. I control how I feel. You can now control how you feel when you have this rev, rev, revelation casting all your care. I'm going to humble myself. Not getting into pride because pride is of the devil. See how all this is fitting together? 
The devil's the one behind the pride. And he wants to keep you full of pride so that grace doesn't flow, so that he chokes the word out of you, and so it quits working in your life. Man, can't wait till next program. We're out of time again. I'm going to wrap up the next two programs, and it is some of the most best, rev well, it's all the great revelation. Everything we've shared about this particular um, subject has been awesome, but it's just going to continue to show you how to do this. It is not hard. It's easy if you do it God's way. So we'll pick up next program, next program, next two programs. We'll finish this series up this week with a bang, man. I'll tell you what, whoo, man, we're going to put the icing on the cake. Hallelujah. Well, thanks for joining us. And thank you so much, partners, for supporting us financially. Your financial gifts are helping us reach the other people that are watching right now that haven't supported. They haven't known to yet, but you have caused us to be on the air so they can learn the truth and make them free. Thank you for being so unselfish. We love you. Man, keep sharing this with other people. Share it on social media. Let other people know this. You know people that fight all these negative emotions. Let them know about it. Till next time, Larry Hutton let you know I love you. Have a Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call one 888-887-WORD Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888 888- 887 9673. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.